Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hi students, I am Dr. Kalpana Ramachandran, Professor and Head, Department of Anatomy, Sri Muthukumaran Medical College, Hospital and Research Institute, Chennai. Today's lecture will be on the microscopic anatomy of ureter and urinary bladder. We will begin with the microscopic anatomy of ureter. For better understanding of the microscopic anatomy of ureter, I will just first highlight some of the gross anatomical features of ureter. As you can see from this picture, ureters are a pair of thick walled muscular tube which is going to convey urine from the kidney to the urinary bladder. So, urine is going to be transported from the pelvic calisial system what you are seeing here by peristaltic action of the ureteric wall. So, ureter begins as a funnel shape dilatation called renal pelvis. So, the ureters are going to emerge from the hilum of the kidney, this is the hilum of the kidney, narrows till the lower end of the kidney where it becomes ureter proper. Then it runs on the posterior abdominal wall after which it is going to enter the lesser pelvis. What you are seeing here is the lesser pelvis where you can see the bladder. So, once it enters the lesser pelvis, it is going to run downwards, backwards and laterally. Opposite to the ischial spine, the ureter is going to turn forwards and medially to reach the base of the urinary bladder. What you are seeing here is the interior of the bladder and this is the ureter. Having studied the gross anatomy of ureter, let us now go into the microscopic anatomy of ureter transverse section. This is the histological picture of ureter. You can see that the mucosa of the ureter exhibits longitudinal mucosal folds. These are the mucosal folds formed by muscular contractions when empty. Why these folds are present? This allows the ureter to dilate during passage of bolus of urine. So, when the ureter gets distended, these folds will disappear. As you can see from this picture, the lumen of the ureter is telate that is star shaped. The wall of the ureter exhibits three layers. First layer, innermost layer is the mucosa. Then a muscular coat which is also called as muscularis and outermost coat which is a fibro connective tissue covering that is adventitia. So, the three layers in the wall of the ureter are mucosa, muscular coat and adventitia. Let us now study each of these layers in detail. First let us take up mucosa of the ureter. Mucosa consists of epithelium which is transitional epithelium or it is called as urothelium. Epithelium with lamina propria is the mucosa. So, the lamina propria if you look at it, it contains fibroelastic connective tissue 
which is very dense close to the epithelium close to the epithelium it is dense has got more fibroblasts but near the muscularis the loose areola tissue is not dense sometimes you might occasionally observe diffuse lymphatic tissue and small lymphatic nodules in the lamina propria now let us look at some of the details of the epithelium that is the transitional epithelium when ureter is empty the transitional epithelium is 5 to 6 layered the cells of the topmost layer they are called as dome shaped cells or they are called as umbrella cells they are cuboidal cells cells of the intermediate layer are polygonal and cells of the basal layer or low columnar are cuboidal i repeat there are 5 to 6 layers in an empty um, wall of the ureter the outermost layer is dome shaped cells cuboidal cells or umbrella cells intermediate layer is polygonal cells basal cells or low columnar or cuboidal the superficial cells of the transitional epithelium have a special surface membrane the importance of this membrane is that it is going to serve as an osmotic barrier between urine and the and the underlying tissue there is also a thin basement membrane as you can see in this which is going to separate the epithelium from the loose lamina propria now we will go into the functional correlation of these transitional epithelium why do you have transitional epithelium in calluses pelvis ureters and bladder the transitional epithelium allows distension of these urinary organs during urine accumulation and contraction of these organs during emptying process without breaking the cell contacts in the epithelium that is the most important feature of transitional epithelium let us now study other layers in the wall of the ureter next to the mucosa is the muscular layer there is a difference in the arrangement of the muscular layer in the upper ureter and in the lower third of the ureter in the upper ureter which is proximal two third there are two layers of smooth muscle that is inner longitudinal layer and an outer circular layer but these layers are not very distinct in the upper ureter in the lower third of the ureter that is where the ureter is close to the bladder there is an additional longitudinal smooth muscle layer added and hence in the lower ureter there are three layers of smooth muscle inner longitudinal middle circular layer and outermost longitudinal layer of smooth muscle so how is this smooth muscle arranged i will give you some more details about the arrangement of the smooth muscle in the wall of the ureter similar to the digestive tract muscle layers are arranged in helical configuration the pitch of the helix that is height of the helix varies from short to long so it gives an appearance of a circular or longitudinal orientation of the smooth muscle so if you look at all the muscle layers in the wall of the ureter it is spirally arranged so that in upper ureter they are so close closely arranged that the fibers are mostly circular close to the bladder 
all the fibers assume a long spiral they are lengthy spiral and or longitudinal in direction so upper ureter it is mostly circular and lower ureter because of the long spiral fibers it is longitudinal in direction traced above that is towards the kidney circular muscle layer is going to surround the renal papilla and it is going to exert a milking action to squeeze the urine from ducts of bellini to minor calyces so that then it flows into major calyx renal pelvis and into the ureter proper that is the importance of the arrangement of the muscular layer in the wall of the ureter let us look at some more functional correlation of this muscularis layer so traced below the outer two layers of the wall of the ureter become continuous with the muscle of the bladder which is called as detrusor muscle so the outer two layers are going to be continuous with the detrusor muscle of the bladder but the inner layer which is the longitudinal layer of the ureter forms a triangular sheet triangular sheet of muscle which is called as muscle of bell which is going to blend with the mucous membrane of the internal trigone of bladder what you are seeing in this picture is the base of the bladder you can see a triangular area this is the internal trigone of the bladder so please note in the lower ureter the inner longitudinal muscle layer forms a triangular sheet called as muscle of bell which is going to blend with the mucous membrane of the trigone of the bladder also the muscle of bell is inserted into the posterior wall of proximal urethra this is the urethra what you see in this picture the muscle of bell is also inserted into the proximal urethra posterior wall so why do you need such an arrangement the bell's muscle maintains the oblique course of the intravesical part of the ureter and it elevates the bladder neck this is the neck of the bladder it elevates the bladder neck in order to close the internal urethral orifice that is the functional correlation of the muscular layer of the wall of the ureter we will now study the last layer or the outermost layer in the wall of the ureter it is nothing but adventitia so this adventitia is going to blend with the surrounding fibroelastic connective tissue of the posterior abdominal wall to which the ureter is attached so this layer has got adipose tissue it has got numerous arterioles venules and nerves so that is the outermost layer adventitia which is nothing but the connective tissue layer so what is the functional significance or the functional correlation of learning about the microscopic anatomy of ureter please understand that urine is conducted down the ureter not because of the gravitational force but only because of the muscular contraction of the ureteric wall so this will produce a peristalsis like wave also near the base of the bladder a valve like flap of mucosa is going to hang over the ureteric orifice that will prevent regurgitation of urine from the bladder to the ureter so we will now summarize what we have learnt in the microscopic anatomy of ureter as you can see from the picture all the layers in the wall of the ureter the lumen is stellate or star shaped there are three layers in the wall of the ureter 
mucosa, muscular layer and adventitia. Mucosa has got two layers, uh, epithelium which is specific for the urinary tract that is the transitional epithelium or urothelium and the lamina propria. Then will be the muscle layer, upper ureter is lined with inner longitudinal and outer circular smooth muscle layer. Lower ureter has got an additional outer longitudinal smooth muscle layer. Outermost layer is the connective tissue adventitia that is going to surround the ureter blends with the connective tissue of the posterior abdominal wall. So, that completes the microscopic anatomy of ureter. Now, we will go on to the microscopic anatomy of urinary bladder. Again, to study the microscopic anatomy of urinary bladder, let us highlight some of the gross anatomical features of urinary bladder. As you all know, urinary bladder is a muscular reservoir of urine. What is it going to do? It is going to store the urine until it is ready to be voided. So, what is the location of urinary bladder? You can see in this picture, this is the pelvic cavity. The urinary bladder is located in the anterior part of the pelvic cavity. This is a section of the bladder showing the muscle layer and also the interior of the bladder, the trigone of the bladder, the triangular area which is seen in the base of the bladder is the trigone of bladder and you can see that the ureters are opening in the posterolateral corners. So, mucosa over the trigone is smooth because of the firm attachment to muscular coat. The muscle coat of the bladder is called as detrusor muscle. I repeat, the muscle coat of the bladder is called detrusor muscle. How is it arranged? It is arranged in whirls and spirals. What is it for? It is adapted for mass contraction rather than peristalsis. Now, we will look at the various layers in the wall of the urinary bladder, the microscopic anatomy of urinary bladder in a transverse section. So, the wall of the urinary bladder has got three layers, innermost layer is the mucosa, then is the muscularis layer or muscular coat, outermost layer is serosa bar adventitia, three layers mucosa, muscular layer or muscularis and serosa or adventitia, some layers it is serosa, some areas and some areas it is adventitia. Now, we will take up the mucosa of urinary bladder. As we have already learnt, mucosa consists of epithelium and lamina propria. The epithelium is transitional epithelium. Please understand that the mucosa of an empty bladder exhibits mucosal folds. Similar to what we have learnt in ureter, empty bladder, the mucosa exhibits the mucosal folds. Again, when bladder gets distended with urine, the mucosal folds will disappear. So, mucosa consists of transitional epithelium and underlying lamina propria. We will look at some of the features of the transitional epithelium in a empty bladder or a contracted bladder. As I have already told you, transitional epithelium is 5 to 6 layered thick. 
the superficial cells are called as umbrella cells or dome shaped cells so how do these cells look they are cuboidal large dome shaped they bulge into the lumen the cytoplasm if you look at it or eosinophilic cytoplasm sometimes you might see some cells with two nuclei it is called binucleate why is it called as umbrella cells it is because cytoplasm spreads like a umbrella to allow distension of the bladder without tension of individual cells so the superficial cells are called as umbrella cells intermediate layer you have round or polygonal cells two to three layers basal cells or columnar cells so in an empty bladder transitional epithelium is 5 to 6 layered what about the transitional epithelium in a distended bladder when bladder gets distended with urine the thickness of epithelium is reduced to 3 layers the surface cells become flattened or it is squamous why because to accommodate increasing surface area so transitional epithelium in a distended bladder will look like stratified squamous epithelium that is the surface cells are flattened the outer plasma membrane if you look at this the superficial cells the plasma membrane covering the superficial cells is very prominent next to the epithelium is a lamina propria superficially it is dense deep layer is loosely arranged why is this arrangement like this this is for flattening the mucosal folds so what does lamina propria contain like any other area it has got connective tissue fibers numerous fibroblasts blood vessels please note as i have already mentioned in the region of trigone lamina propria is absent so the mucosa is very thin and it is tightly adherent to the muscle coat that is the significance of the area of trigone where the mucosa is thin because of the absence of lamina propria and is tightly adherent to the muscle coat as i already mentioned there is a change in the appearance and cell shapes in the transitional epithelium when it is empty and also when it is distended when the bladder is empty the superficial cells of the transitional epithelium are dome shaped umbrella cells when it is distended bladder is distended the superficial cells become squamous so cuboidal cells change their shape into squamous cells the reason for this can be studied using a trans a transmission electron microscope it is called as tem transmission electron microscope the details which now i am highlighting are seen in transmission electron microscope so the superficial cells you can see that they exhibit thickened rigid regions in the integral surface of plasma membrane called as plaques they are called as plaques just look at this diagram above this is a diagrammatic representation of the superficial cells of the urothelium so the superficial cells have thickened regions which are called as plaques these are visible only in a transmission electron microscope so how do they look under light microscope they are going to look like dark eosinophilic stains can you see this these dark eosinophilic stains are nothing but the plaques so plaques are nothing but the thickened regions in the surface plasma membrane of the superficial cells 
they are connected to thinner shorter regions which are more flexible they are called as interplague regions. So, let us know the significance of plague and interplague regions as studied with a transmission electron microscope. So, these interplague regions are going to act as hinges. In an empty bladder, the interplague region is going to allow the cell membrane to fold inwards like a concertina that is they form the membrane forms stacks of flattened plasma membrane this interplague region is going to act as a hinge and these stacks of plasma membrane in an empty bladder is sometimes inappropriately called as fusiform vesicles. So, this allows the umbrella cells to expand quickly when bladder is distended. So, plagues, interplague region and the fusiform vesicles are seen in an empty bladder. What happens when the bladder is filled with urine? This apical plasma membrane is going to expand and these stacks or piles of plasma membrane become part of the apical membrane. So, this interplague region is going to allow the epithelium to expand to full stretch changing the cell shape from cuboidal to squamous shape. So, when empty the plasma membrane is kept folded with the interplague region acting as a hinge. When the bladder gets filled with urine these vesicles or the stacks or piles of plasma membrane become part of the apical membrane. So, there is extra membrane present which makes the cells squamous in shape. The exposed or the apical cell membrane of superficial cells in the transitional epithelium is also thicker you can see in this picture. Also one more thing you must note that desmosomes and occluding junctions attach the lateral border of cell to one another. This is the lateral border of this is one cell, this is another cell, this is the lateral border of the cells. There are some cell junctions here which are called as desmosomes and occluding junctions. This is also one characteristic feature of the cells of the transitional epithelium. So, what is the importance of the plagues? They are impermeable to water, salts and urine even when the epithelium is fully stretched. When the epithelium is fully stretched becomes compressed as 3 layers when the bladder is distended with urine the plagues are impermeable to water, salts and urine. So, because of this it provides an effective osmotic barrier between the concentrated urine which is inside the bladder and under the and the underlying connective tissue. So, the epithelium which we have studied in detail we call it transitional epithelium or urothelium is waterproof it is impermeable to the contents which are present within the urinary bladder. Next we will talk about the muscular layer or the muscularis as I have already mentioned the thick muscle coat is called as detrusor muscle. There are three layers of muscle coat but they are arranged as anastomosing longitudinal bundles in between which you will have interstitial connective tissue. The fibers are running in all directions. I told you there are three layers it is inner longitudinal, middle circular and outer longitudinal similar to what we have seen in the lower ureter. The three layers like the lower ureter are difficult to distinguish. 
One more important point about this detrusor muscle is that at the junction of bladder with the urethra, the middle circular layer of smooth muscle fibers, they become arranged circularly to form sphincter vesicae. They form what is called as sphincter vesicae at the internal urethral orifice. Last layer is or the outermost layer is serosa or adventitia. Please note serosa lines the superior surface of the bladder while the inferior surface is covered only with connective tissue that is called as adventitia. Serosa means which lines the superior surface has got connective tissue and a mesothelium. Mesothelium is nothing but simple squamous epithelium. So, in the superior surface of the bladder you have serosa, if the section has passed through the superior surface of the bladder you can see the serosa, but inferior surface you have only connective tissue there is no mesothelium which is simple squamous epithelium. So, in the inferior surface the connective tissue adventitia will blend with the connective tissue of adjacent structures. So, now we have come to the end of this lecture, we will summarize what we have learnt in this class on microscopic anatomy of urinary bladder. The wall of the urinary bladder has got three layers from inside outwards, mucosa, muscularis, serosa or adventitia. As you have already been told mucosa has transitional epithelium or urothelium and a lamina propria. Transitional epithelium in empty bladder has about 6 layers of cells. When stretched transitional epithelium appears stratified squamous that is when it is distended with urine the changes in the epithelium that is from umbrella cells or dome shaped cells in the surface layer to squamous cells in the surface layer that is a change in the shape of the cells is because of the thicker plasma membrane of supercell cells and folded plagues. In relaxed bladder the plagues are confined to the vesicles in the plague regions are going to act as hinges that allow the apical cells to expand during stretching. So, when the bladder wall is stretched the cells become squamous. Please note that the thicker plasma membrane and transitional epithelium provide osmotic barrier to urine and hence this epithelium is called as waterproof epithelium. Outer to the mucosa is the muscle layer which is a thick muscular coat called as detrusor muscle has three indistinct layers of smooth muscle. Outer to it outermost coat is serosa which lines the superior surface of the bladder which consists of connective tissue and mesothelium. Inferior surface of the bladder is covered by adventitia. So, that completes the class on microscopic anatomy of ureter and urinary bladder.